then it's because I was wearing the headphones oh yes it's one of those things that happens isn't it actually I was listening to this it's tremendous CD player the age of technology it's wonderful it'll be an antique in no time it won't be an antique actually I suppose it will be an antique one day won't it 50 years or so as a matter of fact that's why some people go to a lot of trouble making things called time capsules and this is a fact as well Sutton, I made a time capsule once. It says here that when the clock was removed, hidden in the brickwork was a time capsule which was full of artefacts from a hundred years ago. Well, isn't that fascinating? Uh, what is an artefact sweep? You don't know? Um, do you know, Sooty? Well, we'd better go and ask Matthew. He's bound to know. After all, he's an intellectual. <laughs> Morning, Matthew. Oh, sorry to interrupt your serious reading. <coughs> but we wondered what you could tell us about time capsules and artefacts. Oh, it's easy, Sue. You see, um, time capsule is a sort of container that you put things in, then you bury it in the ground to be found later. Oh. And the things you put inside it are called artefacts. It's a sort of way of letting people of the future know how we lived in the 80s. Mm. Can you make a time capsule? Well, anybody can, actually, so it... Actually, that's a very good idea. But why don't you go and use the bathroom and have a think about the sort of artefacts you'll put in your time capsule? Go on, off you go. And I'll have a think about a container we could use as the time capsule. It's going to be watertight and it's going to last a hundred years. I wonder if there's anything under here. No, we won't use that. Uh, what else could we use? Uh, oh, I think I know. Oh, this is really exciting. Just think, in a hundred years or more, someone will find our time capsule and discover just what it was like living here all those years ago. Now, just what sort of things are we going to put in it? <coughs> this soap. Oh, good idea. So they'll know how we kept ourselves clean. And, uh, oh, yes. Oh, good idea, Sooty, the flannel, to show them how we washed. And we could put a toothbrush and toothpaste in to tell them about dental hygiene. <coughs> the shower handle? Oh, yes, that's an excellent artefact sweep. That'll tell them a lot about the sort of plumbing we had. Oh, yes, and the bath plug. Otherwise, they wouldn't understand how we kept our bath water in. Excellent. Now, come on, let's take all these artefacts to Matthew and we can pick up more on the way. Come on. Thought of another artifact? Well, get it, but be quick. Right. Hang on, just, whoa, what is hang on? What's all this stuff? Sue, what is all this stuff? Well, they're artifacts, of course, Matthew. Come on, Sooty, I want a hand with the piano. What, what just a minute. Piano? Mm. Come on, let's talk about this. Let's not be silly, shall we? Yeah, sweep, that is silly. <laughs> It's an artifact. It's not. It's a shower cubicle. Look, put all this junk over there with everything else. Come on, take it away, sweep. Now, look, you, as you can see, I've got the container here. It's not very large, so we have to be selective, which is why I'm going to put this in. This is a, just a piece of card with our names and addresses so that people will know who we were and where we came from. There we are. What are you going to put in then, uh, Sue? Well, I was going to put a party dress in, but yes. it'll get terribly creased by the time a hundred years has passed. Oh. So, I'll just settle for a hair ribbon. A hair ribbon? Is, is that are. all? OK, what about you, Sweet? What are you going to put in? A picture of a kitten? 
But sweep, you don't like cats or kittens. <laughs> That's why you're putting it in the box. <laughs> yes, okay. Well, what are you going to put in, Sooty? Here, go and get it. This should be something exciting. A crust. Well, I don't know what that's going to look like in a hundred years' time, but anyway, it's your time, Capsule. Can we go and bury it now? <coughs> yeah. All right. Let's go and bury it, shall we? I'll get my jacket. Come on. Come on. Right, this looks like the ideal place to me. <coughs> but why in the middle of a field, Matthew? Who's going to find it here? Ah, I've been thinking about this, Sue. Yes? You see, in a hundred years from now, mm -hmm. this probably won't be a field with grass. It'll probably be covered in houses. Oh. Now, when the diggers arrive to dig up the foundations, what are they going to find? <laughs> the time capsule. Exactly right. Mm. That's why we're going to bury it here. So this is going to be one giant blow for the future. <laughs> All right. I didn't know the ground was going to be rock hard. I'd like to see any of you lot doing any better. I'll never play the violin again. <laughs> Let's The magic spell. Well, I'm quite impressed, Sooty, but the problem is, there's still no hole. Hole! Oh! <laughs> there is a hole! Hey, that's great! Let's get the time capsule in there, and somebody will find it in a hundred years' time. All we have to do now is cover it up with the soil. What soil? Well, the soil that came out of the hole. The, the soil... Oh, no. There's no soil. It's a magic hole. <coughs> Look, it'll be discovered in a hundred minutes, not a hundred years, if we don't cover it up. <coughs> We'd better take it and bury it somewhere else. The problem is, where? Oh, that's an excellent idea, Sooty. Matthew? Yes? Matthew. What? I think we've cracked it. You see, it's all terribly simple. Yes. We get back in the van. Yes. And you drive. Yes. And we go off to the water's end. Perfect. Ideal. So, uh, what do you think of the plan, Matthew? It's a winner, Sue. A winner. Goody. Look, bring the time capsule over there and we'll carry the plan out. Come on. Right, where are you three? Here we are. Oh, and the time capsule. Thank you very much, Susie. Now, listen, in a hundred years from now, this lake will have totally dried up. Mm -hmm. Somebody will come along and discover the time capsule. <laughs> so all I have to do is heave ho this thing into the middle of the lake. After three. Ready? One, two, two three. three. Ah! Well done. Foolproof, this. Absolutely foolproof. Hmm. What's that? What did he say? He said, do not throw time capsules in this lake by order. Well, so much for that plan. Come on, let's go. So just run through your plan once more for me, Sue. Well, you drive past that open manhole just up there. Yes. And as we pass it, you throw the box into it. The workman will then put the cover on and bingo. <laughs> it's a great plan. It's great. It'll be absolutely ages till anybody finds it. Mm. Right. Let's do it. I'll tell you another thing, Sue. Mm -hmm. The amount of time it takes to do drain repairs, it'll be 200 years before anybody finds that thing. <laughs> what did you say? I don't know. Excuse me, what did you say? I said... <laughs> Oh, no! It's 
back to the drawing board. <laughs> right, I've done it. The ground was nice and soft, and I filled it in. There were no silly signs telling me not to do it, so we've cracked it. As you know, it really is quite remarkable. This whole time capsule idea has been a very good one. You know something? In a hundred years from now, we could all be famous. It's actually true that, you know. I don't think anybody's going to find that sweep in the next hundred years or so. I'll tell you what, I'd love to be around to see the face of the person who eventually discovers our time capsule. Uh, excuse me. What? Are you Matthew Corbett? Ah, yes, I am, actually. Do you want an autograph? Um, no, I'd like to return this box to you. How did you know it was our box? It had your names inside. I'd like to keep this ribbon for my sister's hair. Mm. And I'd like to keep this picture of the kitten for my wall, because I like kittens. Mm. Oh, I fed the bread to the birds. Mm. So we've got the box back. And at least there's no sign of that funny frogman. Oh, hi, you. Coming, Daddy. Wretched oh, artifacts! Wretched time capsule! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Our time capsule was an absolute failure, wasn't it? Now we'll never be able to tell the people of the future what it was like living in the 1980s. You'll tell them. <laughs> Sooty, I am talking about a hundred years from now. That's true, actually, yes. It... I'd never thought about that. You're absolutely right, Sooty. What on earth are you two on about? Sue, we can forget all about time capsules and artifacts. <coughs> Why? Yes. Because you three can tell the people of the future exactly what it was like. Mm. You see, as Sooty's just pointed out quite rightly, you aren't like human beings. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, don't be cheeky, please, Sweep. No, you see, the fact is, you're like Peter Pan. You see, you're all five years old now, right? <laughs> you're only four. <laughs> well, all right, you're only four. But you see, however many birthdays you have, you'll still only be five and four. <laughs> you see, Sooty's been five years old for the past 32 years. I'm going to grow older, but in fact, you will never grow older. You'll always be the same. So there's no need for a time capsule. Exactly, Sue. Oh, I wonder what things will be like in a hundred years from now. A hundred years from now? Well, things might change considerably. I mean, take this house, for example. This might be very different. In a hundred years from now, this house may not be here at all. Ooh. It may be knocked down. Well, this might be the site where the rockets take off for the moon trip flight. No one can tell what will happen. The future's a thing you can't see. Life doesn't follow a pattern. There isn't a lock or a key. It's absolutely true, you know, Sooty. What about this bed? Well, this bed in a hundred years from now? Not sure at all. Listen. In a hundred years from now, this bed may be a pile of rust. It may be thrown out or, or taken away to, to Kathmandu or Mandalay. No one can tell what will happen. That's nice, Sue. The future's a thing you can't see. That'd be nice. Life doesn't follow a pattern. There isn't a lock or a key. What about this bow? Well, this great big one here, sweet. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Listen, in a hundred years from now, that bone may just be worth a bomb. Because of its age, it will be antique, an artifact covered in mystique. No one can tell what will happen. The future's the thing you can't see. Life doesn't follow a pattern. There isn't a lock or a key. I say, Matthew, yes? what about this dress? What will this look like in a hundred years? In a hundred years, Sue? Yeah. I'm not very sure. Listen, in a hundred years from now, this dress may still be as it is. Oh. 
Well, then they will say, what a beautiful dress. But if it's stained and torn, what a terrible mess. No one can tell what will happen. Come on, sweet. The future's a thing you can't see. Very nice, Sue. Life doesn't follow a pattern. There isn't a lock or a key. Listen, a hundred years is a very long time. We hope to see you long before that. See you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Stop working. Sooty, why did you turn that off? Because you were making a dreadful groaning noise, Matthew. <gasps> Say that again. Say it again. Because you were making a dreadful groaning noise, Matthew. <laughs> he's spoken! It's the first time in 30... It's, it, he's... Hello? It wasn't you, was it? It was you speaking, wasn't it? Of course it was. Sue, I don't know. You must have been throwing your voice. I thought it was him. No, oh, throwing your voice. That's what ventriloquists do. <laughs> yes, they do, actually. You've got to laugh, haven't you? Hey, we had a good laugh, didn't we? The oh, yes. day that we had that ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> You two, what are you doing? <laughs> There's someone inside that box. Let me see. Oh, of course there isn't. <laughs> you heard them. Did you hear anything, Sooty? And uh, where was this voice coming from? Oh, really, you two? I think you've been at the wine gums again. See you later. are we? <laughs> oh dear, I think I'd better explain what's happening, otherwise you'll think you've gone mad. Listen, it was me all the time. <coughs> yes, me, Sweep. I got this book out of the library. It's called Ventriloquism and Throwing Your Voice. That means making your voice sound as if it's coming from somewhere else, like this, or this, or this. Yes. Oh, that is a good idea, Sooty, yes. Come on, Sweep. We're going to play a trick on Matthew. <coughs> oh, come on, Nitwit. It was me again. Come on. <coughs> right. Now, don't spoil it by giggling, Sweep. You and I will hide under the bed, and I'll throw my voice so it appears that Sooty's speaking. <coughs> Wake up, Matthew! Oh. oh, it's you, is it, Sooty? Yes, and it's time to get up, Matthew. Oh, can't I have a lie-in? No, you should get up. This is the best time of the day. Oh, all right. You! You! You said that! Of course I did. See? I mean, did you hear? You did it again! Did what? Sp spoke! Spake! Uttered! Said something! Say something else! What would you like me to say? Oh, this is amazing! I must tell my father! Say something else! What would you like me to say? <coughs> <coughs> That's a very nasty cough you've got, Sooty. It's the dust underneath the bed! <coughs> but you aren't underneath the bed! I am! <coughs> what? It's very difficult to breathe, as a matter of fact. I can't stand it for a moment longer. But you, that was Sue saying that. <laughs> She's been reading this book, <coughs> Art of Ventriloquism and Throwing Your Voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly had me fooled then. Sue, I thought that was sooty talking. <laughs> Listen, you three go and use the bathroom. Go on, off you go. Right and I'll have a look at this book, The Art of Ventriloquism. Weep. Keep your tongue up against the roof of your mouth and try and make the sound come from the back of your throat. <laughs> yes, I know it's difficult, but if you keep at it, you'll find that all of a sudden you can do it, like riding a bike. Anyway, keep trying, and one day you'll be able to throw your voice. Sue! <laughs> Sue! <gasps> yes, Sweep? Uh, can you come down here a minute? Weep! This is amazing! You're not throwing your voice, but that is the most 
amazing impression of Matthew I've ever heard. Sue, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can, Sweep. Th Sooty, can you listen too? Listen, I don't want to have to say this twice, so can you listen carefully? We are listening, and we're very impressed, Sweep. Say something else, come on. Look, I'm going down to the shops later. <gasps> That's amazing! Is there anything else for the shopping list? Oh, that sounds just like Matthew, doesn't it, Sooty? Can you hear me? Of course we can. Can you hear me? Yes, Sweep. Don't strain your throat. Shall I get some soap? No, no, no. We'll pass you the soap. Is there anything else you want? A spaghetti, suet, oven chips, disinfectant, shoe black, porridge, OK? What? All that? Now? Isn't anybody going to talk to me? Help! Let me out! Who said that? What? <laughs> oh, it's you, is it, Sue? Up to your old tricks again. Well, listen, you didn't know this before, but actually, I am a first-rate ventriloquist. Really? So that, yes. Oh, goodness me. There's a little fellow underneath the breakfast bar. Let me go and get him up. Come on, little chap. Come along, little chap. Don't he's ask a good me fellow. what he's up to. There we are. What do you think of the hat? Eh? Huh? Huh? What's that? This, this is Eli. <coughs> he's a dummy. Well, you're not too bright yourself, sweep. Say hello to all your little friends, Eli. Hello, guys and girls. That's <laughs> good, wasn't it? You never saw my lips move either. Where, where's, where's Sooty? Nyakonang, <coughs> Sooty. I'm going to sing. A song! He's gonna sing a song. What are you gonna sing, Eli? Sawdust! Sawdust? Don't you mean stardust? No, I mean sawdust! Sawdust is gonna say so you as well. What's happening? His head's fallen. For goodness sake, how did that. Oh no, look who it is. You, would you get out of there? That's not fair, you know. You were hopeless. The dummy was pathetic. Yes. You mustn't say that. Look, give me a hand down here with him. Come on, Sooty. We'll have to get his head back on. No, he was not pathetic. Anyway, you mustn't speak like that about ventriloquist dummies because they are very sensitive. Come on, Sooty. Do you get his head back on? Looks like a cabbage patch doll gone wrong. Don't speak like that about that dummy. They are very sensitive. That's very hurtful. You see, it might upset him and he might... What? He's leaving! Eli, don't go up to... You see what you've done now? You better go and catch him before he ends up as a piece of matchwood. Come on, let's go hunt Eli. Eli, don't leave. I feel sure he's going to be around here somewhere. Well, I can't see him anywhere. Neither can I, Sue. No. I think the best thing to do is to split up. All right, so you go over there, Sue, mm -hmm. and ask if anybody's seen Eli. OK. Uh, and Sweet, mm -hmm. you can ask some of your friends if they've seen him, will you? Oh, and Sooty, you get in the little Sooty box and you and I will go and ask if anybody's seen Eli. I'll ask this little girl. Excuse me, hmm? have you seen Eli anywhere? No. You haven't seen the little boy with the green cap on running up and down, have you? <laughs> Eli's about four foot tall with a school cap on. Have, have you seen him anywhere? Claire, can you tell me if you've seen Eli anywhere? Hi. Eli's about four foot tall and he's got a school uniform on and he's got a, a wooden head. Does that ring a bell? No. You don't know anybody with a wooden head? No. Where's Sooty now? Oh, there you are. Don't you get lost. Listen, I think we really have lost Eli. I wonder where he's gone. Well, where would you go if you had a wooden head? And sawdust between my ears? Yes. Well, if it was like that, I'd probably go back to school to learn something. <coughs> school! <coughs> That's probably where he's gone. <coughs> Come on, down the local school. Come on, sweet. Come on, Sue. <coughs> right. Here we are, the local school. Mm -hmm. oh, there's no sign of Eli, though. Oh, sweet, you've got the binoculars. Can you see anything through them? Oh, sweet. Hurry up. Can you see anything? <coughs> oh, he's there. 
Is what? Where? You're right, it's him, it's Eli! Oh, we found him! ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling Oh, no. There's dozens of them now. Oh. You three stay here. I'll go make a snatch. Get in, Matthew. Got him! <laughs> Success! Well done, Matthew. You've got him. Yes, of course. Listen to me, Eli. Stand still and stop mucking about, otherwise I shall take your head off and lock it in the attic. Hmm. My name's not Eli and you won't take my head off. Hi! Who are you? Me? I'm the headmaster. Hmm. And you're in trouble. Me in trouble? Why? Yeah, because you're trespassing, so I'm going to punish you. Punish me? Mm hmm. You're not going to take me down to the police station, are you? Oh, no, no, no. Something much worse than that. I'm going to force you to come in and watch my act featuring Miss Nikki and little Eli. So in you come, boy. And you three. Come on in here. <laughs> Hello? My name's Mr. Beaumont. You all know me, don't you? Yes! Yeah! Of course you do, because I'm your headmaster. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got a captive audience. So I thought I'd entertain you with a tiny bit of sword swallowing. Look, see? Yeah, little sword. Right, here we go. Mr. Beaumont! <laughs> now, you mustn't do things like that in front of the children. It's very dangerous. Well, of course, I knew that. I knew that. Yes, indeed. Mustn't set a bad example for the kitty winkies now, must we? That's right. Right then, catching a bullet in the teeth. No! Look, you can do anything you like, as long as it's not dangerous. It's just the face of an idiot. Yes. I'll tell you what, I'll do my balloon modelling. At least you can't hurt yourself with that. Too true. <laughs> <laughs> right then, balloon animals. Worm. <laughs> now I'm going to do something fantastic. It's not dangerous, is it? Oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about ventriloquism. Well, what are those for? What? What are those for? What? What? What are those for? Oh, these? These are my earmuffs. <laughs> my ears are cold. Are they? What? Uh, are they? Oh, yes, they are. Are your ears cold? Well, now you come to mention it, yes, they are a bit. I'll tell you what, put these on then. There you go, is that warmer? What? Is that warmer? Oh, yes, much warmer, thanks. Well, I'll tell you what, you keep these, then. Righto. I've got another set. What? Pardon? Ventriloquism. Why, why are you putting earmuffs on a dummy? Pardon? What? Right, then, I'll introduce you. Now, this is little Eli. This is little Eli. Hello, everybody. Look, tell us about the time when you saw all those funny animals down at the zoo. Pardon? Yeah, that was a funny one. What? Why is she laughing? Pardon? Look, you're not meant to be talking to her, you naughty boy. What? Was he talking to me? Pardon? What? I wasn't talking to you. Oh, can't do it. What's he saying? Pardon? What? Pardon? I'll tell you what, we'll do our big trick. Where I drink a glass of water and little Eli recites the alphabet. OK? Give me the glass. Shall I give you the glass? Pardon? What? She drank your water. Pardon? Oi, oi, I'm off. Oh, don't take the dummy. Don't take the dummy, Miss... Miss Nicky. Don't... I don't know what's going on. What? Why did you take him? He hasn't finished telling his joke yet. I just thought, has he told his joke? I want to tell a joke. Pardon? My dog's got no nose. What? I think he's doing his joke. Awful. How does he smell? Pardon? Good night. <laughs> that was a funny one. Well, until we meet again, it's goodbye from me, and it's... Pardon? ...from Miss Nicky, and I'll leave the last word to little Eli. Well, thank you. Well, it certainly has turned out to be the most extraordinary day. You see, Eli couldn't wait to get back to this house, having worked with Miss Nicky and Mr Beaumont. Still, everybody's very tired now, so it's time to say goodbye to you all. So, from me, goodbye, everybody. Uh, Eli, you're going to say goodbye? Good guy, every goggy. Uh, Sweep, are you going to say goodbye? 
<laughs> Where did you get that? See you again soon. That's a ventriloquist doll.